when there aren't many asteroids on the screen, we could do with a bit of an extra challenge. So let's add some enemy ships. Let's code it. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. I'm Bob Grant and this is lesson 10 in our Asteroids course. We've pretty much got a complete game now and we finished off doing some little optimization in lesson number 9. But as you saw from the intro video, once we get to near the end of a level and there's only a few asteroids floating around, we need a little bit of extra excitement to just encourage you to finish off that level and get on with the game. So we're going to add some alien ships that come in on each level after a certain amount of time and they of course are going to try and kill you. So let's get coding and add in our alien ships. The idea behind the aliens is that we'll wait for a random amount of time and after this we'll then spawn the alien ship uh, and that will start either at the left of the screen or the right of the screen. It's going to have to move from this start side towards the other side of the screen so it will always choose a direction which is between two limits as, as shown with the red bars on the screen. So we'll start off by choosing a direction to travel in and it will then travel in that direction for a short amount of time. After that, we'll then re-choose a direction to travel in and travel in that direction for a short amount of time. And we'll just simply repeat this process, picking a direction, travelling for a random amount of time and then choosing a new direction until we reach the other side of the screen. And at that point, we'll then reset the delay timer so that we then regenerate another alien ship at some point in the future. So coming into our code, the very first thing I want to do is to come down here to where we generate our asteroids. And at the moment we're generating 10 asteroids. The alien ship system then is where we're going to have to create a delay and then our alien ship's going to appear. So while I'm doing my testing, I don't really want to have to avoid all the asteroids and try and stay alive. So I'm going to just take that number of asteroids down to one, which means that when we run our game, We've only got one asteroid to worry about, so it's going to be very easy for us to stay alive long enough to see our alien ships appear. So that just gives us a little bit of it makes our testing just that little bit easier. So let's have a look at how we're going to program these ships then. To implement our ship then, we need to first of all create an object to hold it. So we've done the same with most of our other um, objects. So we're going to have an alien ship. And we're going to make that equal to one of our Lua tables and that's going to hold then the object for, the, for this ship. To make things easy for ourselves, I, I'm just going to simply copy pretty much our player ship. So the alien ship's going to look like just a different coloured player ship. So I'm going to copy this block of code here. Let me just copy that out. And control C that, okay. So we're going to have to have some sort of function which is going to initialize our alien ship. So I'm going to put that down the very bottom of my code. So let's come down here and um, find our particle stuff. And our particles are near the end of our code. So here we go. So I'm going to create a function which is going to initialize my alien ship. And that doesn't accept any parameters, and that's the end of our function. In it, alien ship. And inside here, then, I'm going to paste in my player ship definition. So let's edit this a bit for it. So this is going to be my alien ship. So it's going to have a position. So when we first initialize our alien ship, it's not, not actually going to be on the screen. So all of these values in here can really be set to zero. And once we actually find it's time to spawn the ship, then we're going to set all of these to something um, suitable. 
So our alien ship is going to have a position. It's going to have a velocity which is going to give us its speed and direction as it moves across the screen. Now it's not going to accelerate or decelerate. So it's just going to go to constant velocity. Its rotation then, that tells us what direction it's pointing in. So we need to keep that. But it's not going to be rotating when we press any buttons. It's got a radius. It has a set of points which define the shape of the object. So our player ship object is color six at the moment. So let's come in here and let's say that um, our alien ship, um, we're gonna put that as this color down here. So that's so that's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's kind of color eight. So let's use color eight for our alien ship. Let's just change all those. Now we said that our alien ship isn't going to be on screen all the time. So we're gonna to have to create some sort of flag which tells us whether it's active or not. So let's just call that our active flag. And that's initially going to be false. We're going to have to have then some sort of timer. So when we initialize our alien ship, we're going to set a timer and when that timer runs out, then it's time to put the alien ship on the screen and start flying it across. So let's call this our spawn timer. And we're actually going to set that then to a random number. And remember, these are in ticks, so 60 ticks is one second. So for now, let's just set it to five seconds. So between five seconds and let's say 10 seconds. And we'll work that out as we, as we have to develop our code, we'll work out exactly what value we need to put in there. But that means that when we start our game then, um, at the moment, after three seconds or so, we'll get an alien ship being spawned. So that then is our initialize alien ship. And that needs to be called then when we initialize our game to get everything set up ready to play. So we have our initialize game function here. So after we generate our asteroids then, we want to initialize our alien ship. And that will get the object created and set up on the screen. We now need to consider how we're going to control this alien ship. So if we go to our play game state, which is somewhere up here, uh, let's find that. So do play game. So we have our normal idea of we do all of our updating of our objects and then the drawing of our objects. So really our alien ship's going to fit in with that process. So let's come in here and we will create a new function called move alien ship which will handle the movement of our alien ship. And then a bit lower down, we will do our draw alien ship. So those are obviously two new functions that we need to put into our code. Now our player ship is drawn using this single line of code here. So because our alien ship pretty much matches up with our player ship, we're going to do something very similar to that. So let me copy that. And then if we go down to our init alien code, so this is where we're putting our alien code down at the very bottom of our, our listing. So we're gonna have a function which is gonna draw our alien ship. And that's gonna have an end. Draw alien ship. And inside that function, this is where we now have to work out how we're gonna draw our alien ship. So we know that it's gonna be a draw vector shape call. And that will then be using our alien ship rather than our player ship. But we also know that we don't need to draw it on the screen every single time. So we have an if statement around that. And we know that our alien ship has an active flag. So if our alien ship is active, then we draw it, otherwise we just do nothing. 
So that then is all we need to be having in our draw alien ship function. The next bit then is our move alien ship. So our function move alien ship. Now let's put in the end bit for that. So move alien ship. This is when I have to be a little bit different to the way we move our other objects. So we know that our alien ship, when we first initialize it, it's not going to be on screen and it's not going to be moving. So we don't actually do anything with the alien ship until that spawn timer runs out. But the spawn timer, of course, has to be counted down. So this is probably a good place to do that. So what we can do in here, we can do our, so if our alien ship um, dot active, so that's our active flag. If that is false, then at that point, we want to keep counting down our timer. So alien ship dot, and we call it spawn timer. We're going to set that equal to our alien ship dot spawn timer at minus one. So that's the counting down of our timer. So when it gets to zero, so if alien ship dot spawn timer is less than or equal to zero, then that's time to spawn our alien ship. So we're gonna take that out into a new function. So we're gonna spawn alien ship. And that's the end of our if statement. We then have an else clause. So this is if our alien ship is active, then we're gonna somehow move our alien ship. So at this point, we don't know what we're gonna do for that. So let's just put a comment in there, so at least we're ready for whenever we do work that out. But what this should now do, is it should now, every time we go through our play game tick function, we will be counting down our alien ship spawn timer, and when that hits zero, which is this bit here, we will call this function spawn alien ship, which will somehow initialize our alien ship and get it on the screen and start that movement process. So let's create this function spawn alien ship then. So down the end here. So we have our function spawn alien ship, and that's the end of our function. So inside here, we need to do something which is going to make that alien ship appear on screen. So the first thing we need to do is alien ship dot active. We need to set that equal to true. So remember, that's the flag which tells our software whether the alien ship is currently being drawn or not. So on, as well as then, we now need to set up the alien ship to actually move and appear on the screen. So let's set up some of its um, properties. So for now, We'll just simply have it appear on the screen somewhere so we know that this is actually being called. So we'll set our alien ship dot position and we'll set that equal to one of our position objects. So we have an X coordinate and we'll set our X coordinate. Uh, let's set that equal to uh, 10 and we'll set our Y coordinate equal to, let's say, 60. So that will appear somewhere in the middle of the left-hand edge of the screen. And let's do that. So, as soon as our ship is spawned, we will set its active flag to true, put it somewhere on the screen, and then our draw function should then be able to handle that and draw it. So let's have a look and see if that actually works for us then. So let's do control R to run this. And again, we've got a problem here. So this is on line 1001 and an unexpected symbol near end. So let's go to line 1001, which is somewhere up here. 
uh, line 1001. So, function draw alien ship. If alien ship dot active, then draw vector shape alien ship. And I think it's because I didn't. It's not end if. It's just end, isn't it? Sorry, I've been programming in a different language for a while. So let's just um, take those out. And that. So let's run that now. And there we go. So we press our Z. And now, after a few seconds, we should have an alien ship appear somewhere on the left-hand edge of our screen. And there it is. Right, so we've got our drawing function working. We've got our timer working. We now need to work out how we get this alien ship to move across the screen. So let's come back into our code and let's work out how that happens. The first thing we need to do is to set the velocity of the alien ship. So for that, we'll need to choose both a direction and a speed. So for our direction then, we know that the zero degrees is horizontally to the right of our screen, with positive angles being measured clockwise and negative angles being measured uh, anti-clockwise. So we want to select an angle for our alien ship, which will keep it moving in our direction left to right. So we really want to choose um, an angle between two fixed points, as shown by the red lines on the screen here. And if we make those, um, let's just say, for instance, say 75 degrees, that will mean we will either choose an angle between minus 75 degrees and plus 75 degrees. But we know that tick 80 works in radians, so this equates to minus 5 over 12 pi radians and plus 5 over 12 pi radians. Now that we know what angles we're working with, we need to work out where this code's actually going to take place. So if we think about our movement of our ship, we know that it gets spawned at one edge of the screen. It then chooses an angle, moves for a short time, chooses another angle and moves for a short time. So this angle choosing and moving and then choosing another angle should really be part of our move alien code. So that's where we're going to put it. Looking at the code, we now need to flesh out how this um, moving of the alien is going to work. So let's come up to our move alien ship function. And we've seen here that the first bit of that then is working out if we are still waiting to spawn the ship or not. And at some point then this spawn timer runs out and we spawn our alien ship. So once the ship has been spawned, we go into our movement code then. So inside here, so to move our alien ship then, we obviously will be setting up a um, velocity, so that will have our speed and direction. And that then lets us do the actual moving of the alien. And we've seen that happening then with both our asteroids and our um, player ship. So we know what code to put in for that. Once we've moved the alien then, we're going to have to work out whether it's time for our ship to change direction. So at some point here, we will need to have some sort of timer. So remember, we're, we're going to be moving in a direction for a certain amount of time, but we're going to have some sort of timer. So if our change direction timer um, is less than or equal to zero, then we're going to do a change of direction. So at that point, then we're going to change direction. So we need to work out how this change direction timer is going to fit into our code. And since it is part of our alien ship, it should really be part of that object. So we're going to have to create some sort of change direction timer um, value inside our alien ship object. And that will then be set. And as it counts down, once it gets to zero, we'll know that that's time to change our direction. And at this point then, we will need to do that calculation to select a value between um, minus 5 over 12 pi and plus 5 over 12 pi. So remember that when we use our math.random function, if we use math.random just um, oh, random, 
with no m numbers inside there, that will give us a value between 0 and 1 uh, and, a, and a floating point value. So if we want to turn that into a number between a certain range, we will take our, our random number, we will multiply it by our total range of values. So remember, we're going from minus 5 over 12 pi to plus 5 over 12 pi. And that total range then, the difference between those two values is 5 over 6 pi. So we multiply it by our range and then we add on our start value. So in this, in this instance, our start value will actually be minus 5 over 12 pi. So we'll actually take 5 over 12 pi away from it. And that then gives us a random number in the range minus 5 over 12 pi plus 5 over 12 pi. Okay, so that's just a standard way we use these math.random functions. And you'll find that's pretty much common to any language you use. There will be one version of their random number generator, which creates a floating point number between 0 and 1. Uh, and, and you use this random times range plus the start value to give you a random number within a particular range. So that's how we're going to, to set that up. We'll also need to set the velocity, or sorry, the speed of our alien ship. Uh, and really, for, for now, we're just going to put that in as a standard value. So we're just going to pick a number and, and just tune that for it to be right. So the, so the ship will always move at the same speed, but just in different directions. So we've got now our change direction timer counted down. We've picked a new direction. We'll need to set that then in the velocity of our ship. And we then, of course, then need to reset the change direction timer. So that will get our alien ship moving and changing direction after a certain amount of time. So have a go and see if you can implement that. So remember, our move alien code, we've already written that for our player ships and so on. This change direction timer will be in tribute inside our player ship object. And we'll need to then count that down and reset it every time we change direction. So for the moment, don't, don't worry about de detecting when the player ship, so the alien ship goes off the far edge of the screen. We're, we're, we're gonna, we'll work on that in a second. Um, and we'll also then have to work out how we can get the alien ship spawning on either side of the screen and then going in the right direction. But for now, just get this basic pick direction, move, pick direction, move, that sort of sequence working in the code. So I'll give you a bit of a countdown on that, and then obviously I'll go through my solution to the to this problem. Okay, see you in a wee bit. Okay, so let's have a look at the solution to this then. We're looking at the spawn alien ship function at the moment, and this is where we um, are spawn timer has counted down and our move alien ship function has called this to put the alien ship onto the screen. So we start off then by setting its active state to true and again that puts it on the screen. We're giving it an initial position which at the moment we're just setting to a, a, a set of values that put it on the left hand side of the screen. We're then giving it an initial velocity so we're setting the speed to 1, and again, we'll, we'll tune that to see what looks right as we go through. And we're giving an initial direction then of 0, which indicates a, a horizontally left to right um, direction. We're setting the alien ship rotation. So remember, this is which way the actual um, vector shape is pointing. And we're matching that up with the ship velocity direction. Our spawn timer, we've already said that's just counted down to zero or below, so we're just setting it back to zero to make sure it's at a, at a set value. And then we have this brand new change direction timer, which we're setting to zero. And we're going to initialize that to zero so that when we first spawn our alien ship, we actually will change direction immediately. Because again, the, the change direction code is going to be in our move alien ship function. So this simply means that we don't have to put a copy of the code in spawn alien ship. And we're just going to rely on the move alien ship changing that direction immediately that we spawn it. So let's have a look at our uh, move alien ship function then. 
So again, we're doing our spawn timer bit here. But we then come to actually, at this point then, our, our alien ship has been activated and we now need to actually move it. So we do the move code where we have this um, function move point by velocity. We're then going to count down our change direction timer. And if that change direction timer drops below zero, then we're going to set a new direction for it. So we're creating a local variable here so that we can build up our direction value. And we're doing this, so we're setting our math.random times our math.pi times 5 over 6. So that gives us our range. So remember, math.random gives us a range 0 to 1. Multiplying it by 5 over 6 pi gives us a range from 0 to plus 5 over 6 pi. We know that that direction range needs to go from minus pi over, sorry, 5 pi over, 5 over 12 pi. So we're simply then taking away this, um, let me just drop to a smaller font size here. We're then just taking away the, the half of this range so that we're now getting our direction at this point will be in the range minus 5 over 12 pi to plus 5 over 12 pi. We know as well that we had a little um, helper function called keep angle in range and we give it a, an angle and that will keep it inside our 0 to 2 pi range so our minus angle will be converted into a, a positive angle. We're then setting up the velocity direction to be equal to this new random direction. And we're setting our alien ship rotation to match that so that the alien ship actually points in the direction it's going. So again, we now need to reset our change direction timer. And again, I'm going to reset it here for, for 30 ticks, which is half a second. So every half a second, it will change the direction of the player of the, of the alien ship. So let's have a look and see how that works then. So if I do control R and, and actually run that, so we can see we have our, our player ship there. Let me just go out of the way. And after a few seconds then, we should have our alien ship appear. And there we go. And we can see that it's changing direction as it travels across the screen. And one little error there that we forgot to do. Um, it's obviously now traveled off the top of the screen and it didn't get wrapped around, did it? So let's go back in and see if we can help that. Um, so if it does go off the top of the screen, it actually gets wrapped around. So we know that after we move our alien ship then, we have a little helper function called wrap position. So we give it our alien ship dot position value and that will make sure that then it wraps around the screen. So let's just try that again and see what happens. So we're just waiting for our alien ship to come on screen. And there we go. So if he goes off the top of the screen, or he doesn't go off the top of the screen, well, we can see he's now wrapping round. And if he goes off the top of the bottom, will he go off the top of the bottom? Hopefully at some point it'll go off the top of the bottom and no, not quite. And there we go. We wrapped around the top there. OK, so that will make sure that it keeps our, our alien ship on screen, um, even if it goes off the top of the bottom. Right, so let's come out of that and let's see if we can now get this moving a little bit better. So the idea for the alien ships was to have them starting at a random position on either side of the screen. So either they'll be traveling from left to right or from right to left. And when they got to the far side of the screen, that's when they would um, finish and we'd then have a bit of a pause before the next alien ship was spawned. So at the moment, obviously, when we spawn an alien ship down here, we are, we are typing in specific values. So we need these to be chosen by the software. And we need to now somehow signal that our ship is going to start at the left of the screen or the right of the screen and then travel to the opposite side. So we're going to need some sort of direction flag for our alien ship that's going to indicate that. 
So when we spawn our alien ship, we're going to randomly choose whether we're going to start at the left or the right. We're then going to set our X position. So we know our X position is going to either be um, zero or the screen max X value. Remember that's a constant we defined up at the top of the page. Our Y value then will be a random value between zero and our screen max Y um, value. So that it will start at, at some vertical position on the screen. We'll then need to make sure that once that's all set, then once we go up to um, move our alien ship, so we will then need to make sure that our, our direction setting, so at the moment our direction setting, if I just come into a smaller font size, is assuming that we're heading um, from left to right, so that our direction here is simply our random value um, which is based on um, the zero, so the, the horizontally left to right being our central position. But now we'll have to make a decision. Um, if we are traveling from left to right, well then this bit of code is correct. But if we're traveling from right to left, then we actually need to swap it round by 180 degrees or by pi radians. So we'll actually need to add in pi radians into this random direction to get then a random direction going from right to left. So we've got a number of, of things to do here. Um, for now, let's just get the starting at either side and traveling in the right direction working. And then we'll have a look at how we can detect when it hits the edge of the screen and then start the respawning for the next alien ship. So see if we can go through that. So remember, we're going to need some sort of flag inside our alien ship telling us which way it's going. And then our directions will have to be set according to that direction flag. So let me give you a few seconds, see if you can work that out for yourself. And I'll see you in a wee bit. So hopefully you've managed to get that working. Again, with all these little um, pieces, do have a go. Uh, don't worry if you can't get them going. Um, but obviously I'll go through it now. And again, my solution is is one solution. Um, yours might not be the same, but again, if, if, it, if it works and you're happy with it, then that's absolutely fine. So what I've done then, I have tried to work out here whether we're going to go left or right. So I'm creating a little local variable called left, right. And I'm using my random number generator to pick a number which is going to be either 0 or 1. So it, it, as, as I'm using a range here. So again, with, with Lua and in our take 80, that range is inclusive. So it will include both the start and the end values. So I'll get a number which is going to be either 0 or 1. And I'm saying here that 0 is going to mean that I'm travelling left to right, and 1 means that I'm travelling right to left. Okay, So I've defined those just here, so I know what that means. What I'm going to say is my I'm going to create another local variable. So the, the only position which is different between left and right is the x-coordinate. So I'm going to say here, this is going to be my starting x coordinate. And initially I'm going to set it to be 0, which is right over at the left hand edge of the screen. But I'm going to say, so, but if we are traveling from right to left, so in other words, left, right equals 1, right? Then I need to change my starting x position to be at the other side of the screen. So screen max x is a constant that we defined at the top of our code, which gives me the the pixel width of the tick 80 screen. So I need to come one less than that to put me just inside on the right hand edge of the screen. So we now know that start x is going to put our ship at the correct edge of the screen. So when we come to set up our alien ship position. So remember, this is in our spawn code here. My x coordinate is now going to be the start x value. And we now want to set our y coordinate to be somewhere up, up or down the screen. So we're going to pick another random number, so math.random, a number between 0 and the screen maximum y position. 
And that will then put us, um, so, the, so the X coordinate gives us the left or right positioning and the Y coordinate gives us a random position up and down the screen. We then need to make sure that we save inside our ship object which direction we're going because our move code is going to need to know that to be able to select the right directions to travel in. So we've added a new attribute to our object called left right and we're just saving our little local variable left right into that attribute. So that's now saved inside our object, our alien ship object. When we come to actually move our ship then, so up here, okay? So we're doing our normal movement position here. We're doing our change direction thing. And we're saying here, so once we change direction, we're still calculating our random angle. So this random angle again will always be between minus five over 12 pi and plus five over 12 pi. But what we now need to do is if our alien ship dot left right, so this is the, remember the flag that tells us which direction we're going. So if it's set to one, that's going from the right to the left. And that means that our random direction, we need to shift it round by 180 degrees. And that's what this line does here. So we simply take our direction and we add math.pi, so pi onto it. So pi radians is the same as 180 degrees. So instead of it being uh, an angle based on traveling left to right, where our center point is zero degrees, we're now picking an angle, which is traveling from right to left, with our zero point now being 180 degrees. So again, we simply just put that angle and keep it inside our normal range, and we carry on then as normal. So that should allow us then to run our code and some of our ships will appear on the left of the screen and travel across to the right and some will go the other way. So let's see if we can get that happening as we try it out. So let's run that and get our ship going. And let's see where the ship appears from then. So give it a go. Okay, so that's our normal ship position starting on the left of the screen and traveling towards the right. So we need to have another go now to see if we can get it traveling the other way. So let me just come out of that. So let's just run that again and see if we can get it to spawn from the other side. And there we go. So we now have our alien ship being able to spawn either on the left of the screen or the right of the screen, and then it travels in the correct direction. What we now need to work on is when our alien ship gets to the end of its travel, it obviously doesn't need to come back at the, f at the other side again. It needs to finish and then pause for a while until we spawn the next alien ship. So let's have a look at adding that code into our software. The first thing to look at then is what actually does happen when the ship hits the edge of the screen. So if we, if we come down here, we, we can write a new function which is going to handle the ending of a ship's motion. And if I just paste that in for us here. So I've created a function here called end alien ship. And, and this will handle what to do when either the ship goes off the edge of the screen or, or later on whenever the ship gets hit by one of our missiles. And it's quite, it's quite simple, really. Um, we have this active flag, which tells the rest of our software whether the alien ships actually should be on screen or not. And we simply set that to false. And doing that, we'll take it off the screen and also trigger then the spawn countdown timer. So we do need to then reinitialize our spawn countdown timer and, and set that to a, a value. So you can see here then, we're simply, if I come across here, we're simply choosing a, a random number. And at the moment I've got it here between five seconds and 20 seconds. And actually while I'm here, let me just take that down because we're gonna test this in a second. And obviously we don't want to be waiting around that long for our new ship to be spawned. So I'll take it down between two and um, just over three seconds there. 
So let's have a look. So that's really all we need to do to end the alien ship's motion. Once that spawn timer comes down to zero, the whole system will be reinitialized and we'll have a brand new alien ship heading off in one direction across the screen. So the main bit of the code then is going to be deciding when this end alien ship function needs to be called. And that's going to of course happen in our move alien ship function. So let's come up here and it's around here somewhere. Uh, move alien ship. Okay, so we know this is the position, this, this is the code which actually updates the position of our alien ship. And immediately after we update the position, we do this wrap function, which will send it back to the other side or the other top or bottom of the screen. Now that's actually going to give us a problem here. Going off the top of the bottom of the screen is fine, and that's what we want the wrap position to do for us. But now, instead of when it goes off the end of the screen, it wrapping round to the start of the screen again, in a left-right motion, we want it to not do that anymore. Um, if we leave this in here, of course, once we do the move position and then wrap, our, our wrapping function will put it back to the start of the motion again before we have a chance to detect that it's ended. So we need a way of making sure that the x value does not get wrapped. Now there's two ways here. We, we could either update our wrap position code, but then we'd have to go back to all of our other places where we've used wrap position and probably have to update those slightly. So what we'll do is we will do a bit of a fix around the function here. And the way we'll do that is, is we will make a note of what the x position was before we did the wrap. Okay, so we've just altered the, updated the, the position there with the velocity values. We're now going to make a note, so we're going to use local variable, and we're going to make a note of what the x position is, so the alien ship's position dot x. We're then going to do the wrap position, so that will do the wrapping for us. But now, what we're going to do, instead of keeping that position, we're then going to rewrite in our old x position. So we'll let the wrapping function do its work and alter the y value. But as soon as it's finished, we will overwrite what it calculated the x position to be with what the x position was just after we moved due by the velocity. So in that way, we, we keep the Y wrapping, but have now overridden and disabled the X wrapping. And that will now mean that after we come out of this block of code, our alien ship position will be allowed to go off the end of the screen. So all we now need to do is to detect that and call our end ship function. So if I paste that block in there, so again, we know that our alien ship direction, uh, sorry, we call it left right, didn't we? So let me just change that here. So our alien ship left right. If it's equal to zero, then we're going from left to right. So we need to check for it going off the right hand edge of the screen. And if I just drop my screen size down here. So if our position dot x becomes greater than the maximum x value for our screen, then our alien ship has finished its motion. Else, if our alien ship position dot x has got less than zero, so again, that's the left hand edge of the screen, then again, we're going to end our alien ship. So that really um, should be all we need to do. So let's have a go and see if we can, we can run that. And let's press Z to get some going. So let's see if we can get a, a ship coming in here. So our first ship coming in, going from right to left, and it goes off and finishes up the left-hand edge. Let me just move my ship out of the way here. We now have another ship coming across the other direction. And again, so we now have individual ships coming into our game area, traveling across the screen, and when they get to the far end, triggering the respawning of a new ship after a short delay. So very much we've now got the ship movement happening. 
All we need to do now is add in some the ability for us to shoot the alien ships and of course the ability for the alien ship to shoot us. But let's leave this lesson here for now and we'll cover that in the last in the next lesson which should really be the last lesson of our asteroids course. So make sure you save your work. So come out of that, make sure you save your work and I will see you in the very next lesson. Have fun coding and see you soon. Don't forget to visit the course pages for this project. There you'll be able to download the code for this lesson and get lots of extra hints and tips. You'll also get access to all my other programming, electronics and gaming projects. All the links are in the description below. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.